Okay, folks, here's the story with my ice maker. And uh, everything seems to be just sounding proper. It's just, it started making smaller and smaller ice cubes to the point where it just wasn't making any. It was going through all, all the motions of making ice cubes, but nothing would happen. And when I was able to figure out, I could hear the pump running and everything. What I was able to do is kind of, I was able to pull the ice basket out here and I was able to see water just flowing down here from the overflow. And I wasn't sure if that's just because it's getting too much water or, or what was going on. So anyways, um, one thing I did, I'm, I'm about ready to do the finishing cleaning on this. Um, clean it with vinegar, vinegar water um, and, a, and a paper towel, just or a scrub brush. And, and that's the safest way to start with doing the, the, uh, what, the possibilities of what could be going wrong. So what I have now... This is the done model. I'm just kind of my starting video, but there's your ice tray. And you should have water. I don't know if you can see that back there. You should be able to see your water spraying in there. And you can you can hear the pump. Well, that's what I was hearing before, but it wasn't spraying in there. So that is the way your water should look flowing in there. What was happening? Keep watching the video, and hopefully this is the problem that you're having, and it's not too bad of a fix. It sure beats just throwing it away, because as you can see, it's about to start kicking in like it normally should. See, there's there's where it overflows the water. That's what I, that's all it was doing because it was barely flowing water into the ice tray, and. Um, Anyways, there it goes. So at the end, we'll see what's going on. And now, like I say, I hope this helps you get your ice maker up and running again. And before we move to the next step, be sure to unplug this unit. Keep it unplugged during this entire process until we are finished. I'm also going to bring this entire unit to the sink and turn it on its side to make sure all of the water is dumped out of it. So on to the next step. Okay, on this model right here, you don't remove any of these screws back here. The screws that you're going to want to move, remove, of course, you're going to start with removing the back first and remove these screws on the bottom. And be careful, this metal is going to pop out and it's very sharp. Um, it will cut your fingers. It's, it's not, it's not a uh, beveled metal, especially on the bottom. So wear gloves if you have to. So um, I think there was something else I was going to tell you about this. But this front, yes, yeah, so this front cover, when it comes to time to take this off, beware of your screws too. There's shorter screws in front because that's where your water reservoir is. This is also, they use a foam in there. So this is going to be really difficult to get out. And maybe your model, you won't need to remove this front and you just have it moved to the side. But it's going to be stuck in there pretty good. And it's, it's, it's a two-person job to, to pull this, this out. So... Go ahead and begin by taking this back cover off and then we'll move to the front cover. Okay, if your model is like this one right here, then next, now that you have the back portion of the uh, stainless steel taking the cover off, you've got a screw on this side and you've also got a screw on this side right here that's going to have to come off. Where you? Yeah, right there. <laughs> but they're just, uh, they're what holds the sides on and of course you've got your screws on the bottom that need to come off, so those will come off next. Okay, now that the cover is off, and of course it is still unplugged, you're able to see the water flow line here that runs from the pump and up top. And the first thing you want to do is just inspect it and make sure it's clean. So what I've done is I've pulled it, pulled it off. Um, it just slides on there. Now every model is going to be different. So um, if yours looks like this, this is, this is what I've done is I've taken this hose off. And I've also taken, there's, you can see there's two holes on the bottom there. That's where you can access the screws that hold the pump on. And that's what I'm going to do next is remove it. And of course, I'm going to make sure that the water has been removed from this thing. Because when you take that pump off, you are going to get the water all over your countertop. So make sure it's empty as well. When you go to remove this, this is very sharp metal. This can cut your finger. It's razor sharp. So... Just a FYI, I would say most of these models are going to be this way. Um, it, it is it is just a raw metal; it's not meant to be touched, so it's razor sharp. Be careful with that. So we're going to get that that 
motor off there, that pump off next, and, and see what's going on. So everything's everything on this one here, the tube is clear and free. I did a cleaning on it, took the tube off. I, I blew into this to blow back it to see if there's anything in there, clean the tank out. Of course, they need to be cleaned out properly every so often, which I like using vinegar because it's not toxic. So anyways, uh, on to the next uh, pump removal. One screw, two screw. Okay, I've got those screws out, so let's go ahead and remove that pump, which it just pushes in there. There's nothing really too special about that. So here's your here's your little pump. You need to be careful too, because these these wires these wires down here are very small and easily broke. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to remove this hose off of here, which is kind of hard to see this. Ah, goodness, I need to... <clears throat> oh, it's on there. It's on a rib. Okay, that makes more sense. So, like I said, remove that hose. There we go. And just carefully remove this so you don't damage the wiring or anything. And... Some people are calling for replacing the pump. Let's just, what I'd like to do is let's go ahead and uh, take it apart and see what's going on with it because uh, I know I can hear it running. So here comes the next video and see what's happening with this thing. Here's a nice tip before you take this last screw out. Go ahead and mark it with a pen or something that's not gonna just wash away. So that way you know which way it's gonna go back on. So that's a nice little tip so you're not trying to figure which direction this nozzle was and which way it goes up. So hope that helps you. All right, so I've, I've removed these three screws, and I'm not sure if they're all the same on these things, but you want to be careful you're pulling the, the actual pump motor out. And uh, what that is, it's just a magnet in there, and you want to make sure everything... Yeah, look at that little guy right there. That's a teeny thing. That goes on the bottom there. So we'll make sure that gets put back the way it was. There's your magnet, and... Um, <laughs> What was in here, if you're wondering, was hair. I should have uh, caught the video, the first video, but there's another one of these little washers right here. And there was a single strand of hair somehow made it in to this, uh, it's actually a little wa rubber washer there too, made it through everything. Oh, I'm glad I checked this out too. A little piece of plastic from the factory. <clears throat> There's a one single strand of piece of hair that obviously was uh, from my wife because she's got much longer hair than me. But anyways, it was wrapped around this. Uh, I'm not blaming you, honey. It was wrapped around this this shaft here that runs the pump, and it was uh, restricting the proper flow to get this water up to the tube. So let's uh, put this back together and uh, see how it works. And like I said, we're gonna make sure we find this little washer that's laying here. This teeny little thing right here. That needs to go back in there, just the way it was. All right, we're gonna put it back together and see how this thing sounds now. Okay, since it's kind of hard to take a video with my hand in the way, what I did is I put that back on there, just make sure it goes on properly and snug. And then this just pushes, simply pushes back into the body housing, into the water um, compartment there. And it's nice to have a magnetic screwdriver, so that way that screw can just go right on up in there and. Uh, put this side on and I'll get the other side and we'll move to the next video. I've had to find that it's best to lay it on its back to get this literally in there. This is a real trick and remember this metal is sharp but when this unit's all done it has to be set upright for uh, a number of hours. I'll have to check on that but it's got a compressor you know and all that Freon. You'll mess it up if you plug it in right after this been laid on its back like this so probably a good 12 to 24 hours wouldn't hurt. And there it is. It's plugged in. It sat for 24 hours, so the Freon went back in the compressor since it got turned on its side. And that goes for every refrigerator or freezer. If you ever had one delivered, you don't know if it got laid on its side, and then you go to plug it in, it doesn't work anymore. It's probably what happened. You need to let the Freon run back into the compressor. So everything sounds to be, it looks and sounds to be running just great. Um, you can hear the uh, 
the compressor working, the pump worked great. You see, I could see the water inside of the uh, inside of the reservoir uh, tank, um, where the ice, ice tray tank um, filled up properly. And um, at any second here, we should here go ahead and kick out its first batch of ice. And this sure does beat having to uh, just toss the unit out. Though, so, um, and, and a lot of folks are replacing the pumps and. You know, it might have just been restricted like this one was, and, and if it would have been for that hair, it could have been that piece of plastic from the, sh from the shipping, from the factory as well, so so many things are uh, possible to restrict that flow, but it's always good to just to kind of take a peek and <clears throat> see what uh, what the cause is, so let's, let's hear that first batch of ice, and uh, we'll be back on our way, and won't have to worry about this problem for a while. Beautiful. Perfect. Fantastic. I hope you find this video helpful. And um, please be sure to subscribe. And uh, if you have any questions, um, go ahead and put them in the comments. And I'll try to get back to you as soon as possible. So enjoy having ice again.